Hello children, in the last class we have seen that Taro, a very thoughtful person and who was loving his parents very much and wanted to fulfill all his, all his parents' wish. But one day when his, a strong wind blew through his hut, it made the, everyone in the hut very cold and his father wished to have a sake. But Taro did not, could not get it because it was very expensive as he was a woodcutter. So he thought to fulfill his father's wish and the next day morning he early went up to the forest to chop and cut the wood. As he was doing his work hard, he found that the sun came above his head and he felt very thirsty and he sweated. So he removed off his jacket. Then he heard a rushing sound of the waterfall beyond the rock, where he never heard that sound. So he he never heard such type of sound before. He went there as he felt very thirsty. He knelt and he cupped with his little hands and drank the water. But it tasted as if it is a sake. He drank it again and again. At every time it was tasted, tasted as sake instead of a plain cold water. What will be the next? We will see in the this video channel. Now let's move to the seventh part. Taro quickly filled the pitcher he had with him and hurried home. The old man was delighted with the sake. After only one solo of the liquid, he stopped shivering and did a little dance in the middle of the floor. So Taro quickly filled the pitcher he had with him that delicious sake and quickly went to home and he offered that sake to his father and his father was delighted with the sake and he started to dance on the middle of the floor. He stopped his shivering also. He showed his happiness by dancing on the floor. Now let's move to the eighth part. That afternoon, a neighbor stopped by for a visit. Taro's father politely offered her a cup of the sake. The lady drank it greedily and thanked the old man. Then Taro told her the, fall, the story of the magic waterfall. Thanking them for the delicious drink, she felt in a hurry. Sorry, she left in a hurry. By nightfall, she had spread the story throughout the whole village. So that afternoon, a neighbor came to Taro's house. Taro's father offered her a cup of that delicious sake. And Taro told her that story of that magic waterfall. And by the onset of the night, she spread the story of that magic waterfall throughout the village. Now let's move to the ninth paragraph. That evening there was a long procession of visitors to the woodcutter's house. Each man heard the story of the waterfall and took a sip of the sake. In less than an hour the pitcher was empty. This par paragraph tells us that after having Hearing the story of that magic waterfall, every man of the, from that village came to the Taro's house to taste that delicious sake. And within an hour, the pitcher of that delicious sake was empty. Now let's move to the 10th panel. Next morning, Taro started for work even earlier than the morning before. He carried with him the largest picture he owned, for he intended first of all to go to the water fall. When he reached it, 
he found to his great surprise all of his neighbors there they were carrying pitchers jars buckets anything they could find to hold the magic sake then one villager knelt and held his mouth under the waterfall to drink he drank again and again and then he shouted angrily water nothing but water others also tried but there was no sake only cold water next morning taro started for his work earlier than the last morning and he carried with him the largest pitcher to fill with the sake but when he reached the magic waterfall he was totally surprised to see all his neighbors there and all the neighbors brought carried anything that can fill that can carry find to fill the hold the sake one villager knelt and drank that water from the magic water fall but when he tasted it was like a water it was not the taste of the sake it was just like clay water and nothing else so this made him very angry even other people of that village also tried but they also tasted the same that is the plain water instead of the sake now let's move to the 11th panel we have been tricked shouted the villagers where is taro let us drown him in this waterfall but taro had been wise enough to slip behind a rock when he saw how things were going he was nowhere to be found so after drinking water from that magic waterfall every villager felt that it was not the sake it was just plain cold water so they felt that why they have been tricked they have been cheated by taro so they decided to drown the taro in the magic water fall they wanted to kill taro but taro was very intelligent the moment he felt that the villagers will now kill him he he was behind the rock and he was never found again now let's move to the 12th tower muttering their angry and disappointment the villagers felt the place left the place one by one taru came out from his hiding place was it true he wondered was the sake a dream once more he caught a little liquid in his hand and put it to his lips it was the same fine sake to the thoughtful son the magic waterfall gave the delicious sake to everyone else it gave only cold water as the villagers were looking for taro because they wanted to kill him because they felt that taro have been tricked the villagers they have been deceived by taro but taro was hiding behind a rock so after some time the villagers left that place and when they all left the place taro came out and once again he tasted the water from the magic water fall i to his surprise that waterfall gave him again the taste of sake the delicious sake and the same waterfall gave the other villagers the taste of plain cold water so he was totally surprised do you know what why that magic waterfall gave taro the delicious the taste as the sake just it was a plain cold water yes because taro was a very thoughtful and sincere boy and he worked very hard to fulfill his father's wish he worked very hard to make them happy so sake from the waterfall was a kind of reward given by the mother earth to taro for his dedication hard work etc now let's move to the 13th 
the story of Taro and his magic waterfall reached the emperor of Japan. He sent for the young woodcutter and rewarded him with the 20 pieces of gold for having been so good and kind. Then he named the most beautiful fountain in the city after Taro. This, said the emperor, was to encourage all children to honor and obey their parents. The emperor of Japan got to know about the story of a Taro and the magic waterfall and he rewarded Taro with the 20 pieces of gold for having been so good. I am king for having been so hardworking and sincere. Then he named the most beautiful fountain in the city after Taro. And this was done to encourage all children to obey, honor and respect their parents. Now, what is the theme of this story? The theme of this story is nothing but it teaches us a lesson that we should always work hard to fulfill the dreams and wishes of our parents. And we should always be thoughtful, obedient and hardworking to make our parents' life happier. And you know that what hard work one can get whatever he wants. And even nature helps that person with miracle just like nature helped Taro to fulfilling his father's wish. Thank you children.